Hey guys, what is up? It is Pizza Prestige, and I'm back again with Building Prestige Heights. And this is actually Prestige Heights number two. Uh, this is kind of season two in Alpha 2, but I'm really thinking about a new name for the park. Now, if you do have some cool suggestions, go ahead and put them down in the comments, and I'll see um, what, yeah, what we come up with. Anyhow, let's start off this episode. Uh, what we're doing right now is actually building the entrance gate to the park. And what we have done in the previous episode is build the ticket booths and also the path towards um, this entrance. And I didn't really, you know, as I said before, I didn't want this entrance to be too Disney-like, you know, to have like a giant building that you go through. Just a, a tiny little, well not tiny, but a little a little structure that's just around it, you know, that, that's, that you, you are walking through something, uh, but it's not a huge hotel or whatever. As you know, I just wanted it to be kind of humble, you know, a little, a little shack that, that you go th uh, through to enter the park. And when you enter, enter the park, uh, wow, when you actually enter the park, you actually um, end up in the Main Street area. And I never really done a Main Street area, I gotta say. Um, even in Rollercoaster Tycoon 3, I wasn't a big fan of it. I mostly just did like a building at the entrance that leads to multiple paths. Uh, I never really got into the entire, uh, you know, Disney Main Street sets and, you know, from Shy Guy or whatever in Rollercoaster Tycoon 3, so I have no experience with that. If you want to give me some tips on, you know, how to make it better, um, I have so I have gotten already some feedback, you know, from the forums. Um, I really appreciate it, but, you know, if you see something that I can improve or you think like, well, you're doing this wrong, dude, you can do it this way and it's much better. Um, yeah, tell me, please, you know, I would love to know. Um, it's quite a challenge, you know, too, when you haven't done anything and you have this this tool set with uh, what, you know, lets you create just anything that you imagine um, to be able to imagine things and build them. You know, if you never d really did that, uh, I had to look up some, you know, some pictures of main streets and I didn't really want it to be too much uh, like Disney. So I do have some different styles uh, going on. You'll see that in a moment. And right here, this is actually the same kind of style that I went with for the ticket booths because I kind of wanted it to be, you know, equal. This area, this entire entrance area, I wanted it to be kind of generic. And then when you actually enter the park is when you get into the main street stuff. Now here, just kind of fencing off um, the entrance part right here of the park. And now right there where the fountain is and the, the sand is and stuff, I'm not sure if I want to swap that out. Maybe I want to swap it out for a garden a nice or a nice pond or something like that. Um, you know, it's it's debatable. Uh, right now, I kind of like it, you know, to have some benches right there and just have a nice place to sit down or whatever. Um, but it would also be very nice, you know, instead of that fountain to just have a real pond with, you know, good fountains. And that actually looks pretty, you know, pretty decent compared to the rest of the park. Because this kind of looks like just a flat, empty area that has just been, you know rushed and you know hasn't been put that much effort in and I don't really want any piece of this park to be like that you know I, I want to finish everything in a nice way uh, right now you can actually see me place foliage and it's in a, a way more coordinated way that I did it uh, in the previous park I'm, I'm trying to you know put more effort into every little thing and the little details and just make it look like a real park now uh, someone in the previous episode actually commented I'm not sure who that was um, <laughs> but, you know, thank you nevertheless, uh, you know what I'm talking about, but, um, someone told me to make a parking lot, and I thought, you know what, that's a great idea, so I might experiment with that a little bit, uh, you know, to create some rock textures on the ground or something like that, make them kind of smooth, and then use some walls that are inset into the floor, uh, a tiny bit, you know, to create some lines on there, and maybe with that I can make roads and also a, uh, parking lot, and, you know, um, little pathways to the park from the parking lot that would be very nice but uh yeah we got to see how that goes um you know it's it's not for a couple of episodes that these recordings are done you know i have recorded a bunch of this park because i was just going on a roll i was just you know when when i play this game it's either um complete creativity or creativity or it's a bust and it's kind of when, when you're in this flow of creating stuff, you know, you, you just want to keep on creating and at a certain moment, you either become too tired to play, <laughs> that doesn't really happen that much because you don't have that much time to play, um, or you just kind of get inspirationless and then you're just kind of just, you know, screwing about in the game trying to make something that looks decent uh, from, you know, imagination that has already been uh, exhausted from 
you know the the earlier projects that you built and um you know right now with these recordings these were all just in, in a giant creativity burst and I was like you know what I'm gonna do this I'm gonna build some kind of a main street area and I'm gonna you know do some cool theming to it I actually tried some new things you'll see me doing a bit uh, I actually built a clock tower and I built these uh, facades kind of you know it's trying to go with different things and it just blew my mind as to what this game can now actually do I'm trying to get more familiar with the placement as you can see I actually use um, the um, advanced movement tools and I must say that well the advanced placement tools I think they're called but I gotta say they work great uh, in, the, in the beginning I was a little skeptical you know as to man it, it doesn't you know work that great and you can't really place things that freely but when you really get a feel of how it works you know the just um, the flexibility really comes forward and I think you'll see that uh, even more when I actually build this clock tower that's gonna come right here now when building this I was kinda thinking I don't wanna keep everything in a single grid uh, you know when making Main Street buildings you don't you generally don't want them to be like a flat facade um, that just you know has some tiny different variations uh, of course you could do that but it's it's very nice to have some some buildings and just some structures that kind of stick out you know that are kind of special on their own and this is a very great example for that uh, this you know this is, these are old walls they are uh, sandstone walls actually and right here you can see me make the clock for the clock tower now this was a pretty you know a well it's it's not really daring you know that's not really the right word for it but it was kind of a challenge for me um, to be able to come up with something like this you know it just I was looking for parts that could be used for something like that to create something um, circular that kind of looks nice and I also wanted these tiny little um, how do you call them like the, the little lines or you know the around the um, the outside of the clock that display the, the minutes of course these aren't like this is not the normal clock layout but it's you know it's, it's still a fantasy game I suppose so it's kind of a fantasy clock and it's also a fantasy park so that's gonna be all fine I hope uh, you know trying to do some some different walls to the um, to the same structures is also something new and it's um, the clock I think it worked out great I think I used some lanterns actually for um, for those um, dials right there and I think that works great now and you know when it turns nighttime the actual the actual clock like the white parts of the clock actually kind of get illuminated into a soft yellowish tint and that looks pretty cool as you could see in the I think um, I made a post about it on the creators lounge you can go ahead and look it up it's piece of prestigious planet coaster creations on there um, but on there you can actually see a screenshot of this park in the night and um, yeah I think it looks great at night but also uh, you know what I said is um, the walls instead of just you know using wall one wall type for the entire building which is kind of creates a really plain building you can add some details to it but it's still kind of plain and I kind of wanted it to be more complex so you know I decided I had some sandstone and I had some pillars underneath but I also wanted something lighter a little band of lighter rock and I decided this these like render walls are they're called I think um, they work out great for this purpose and I think, you know, I'm not, I'm not really sure about the way they look right now. It's, uh, I'm still kind of skeptical. It's just, uh, they might be too light or the clocks may be a little too low on the structure. I'm not sure if I want to swap that out later. You know, maybe I should be happy with what it is right now. Um, but, you know, there's always room for improvement. And if you guys have any tips or, um, you know knowledge about this uh, go ahead and yeah put it in the comments I really like to know now adding some dormers I really like the way that you can actually use that tool as you could also see uh, to build the spires but also to um, you know to place multiple objects on the same axis I think that's the best thing ever and I already said that in the previous episode but I just gotta say it again you know I, <laughs> I really love it now the buildings that I'm building in this actual Main Street area, as you can see right here, this is a totally closed facade. This one is not going to have any like interior designs. Um, I'm not sure about that. You know, I, I sure I want to build a uh, a restaurant or something like that, 
but it's probably still going to be the same, you know, interior that I did on the previous um, number of restaurants that I built. And I think, you know, it kind of takes away part of the fun to stop, you know, trying to create new stuff. So I might try some, you know, some different things with different items in the game. Uh, like, for instance, this actual, like, wooden brace that you can put on your walls. Um, that I use for little tables in the entrance um, gate, you know, at the kind of like turnstile like barrier things, uh, the guide rails. Um, but I also use them to create the spire of the clock tower and also for the sides of the dormers on this little building here. And I think, you know, when you put everything together, it just. You know, you can use any item to create just about anything, and it's just really getting used to that that's kind of difficult you know to comprehend what you can build with uh, with stuff and when you finally unleash that that is when you can create new stuff and this restaurant right here um, you know I wanted to create kind of a um, a place for people to sit after they bought their food you can see that little stall right there that I put there um, that's a food stall and uh, well if I'm correct it's a food stall it might also be a t-shirt stall but I'm not totally sure <laughs> Nice planning, Brian. Nice. Um, but right here is actually kind of a seating area for a restaurant. And it's, yeah, I'm not sure what to put in there for seats and uh, and stuff. You know, I um, I will decide on that later. Uh, might also, you know, put a toilet down inside to actually um, create a way for peeps to actually go in. That would be very nice, actually. Um but yeah, what you can see here is what I'm really, really passionate about. These floors, you can, you know, with when you press X, you can actually sink them into the floor so that they're only just sticking out. And when that's the case, they're almost the same elevation as the path, just a little bit taller. You can actually retexture the path um, with your items, and I think that's really cool. It's just, uh, you know, it gives you more flexibility to create real floors without the peeps actually walking through it with their feet. As it was the case in the first alpha, uh, you know, when you place, uh, well, when you build a restaurant and you add a stall inside or a, um, one of the actual hotels I think I built or something like that. And I put a stall in there or actually, no, it was the restaurant in the entrance of the park. And uh, when the peeps actually walk there, they are like to their knees deep in concrete and it just uh, it doesn't feel like a normal way to walk. Um, it doesn't really look natural and... You know, for screenshots and that kind of stuff, it's just really hard to use it. And I think this option right here, you know, they will still stick through the floor a little bit, but they're only sticking through, you know, with the like the bottoms of their feet, uh, the shoes. And I think that's kind of, yeah, it's it's not that bad. You know, it could be better. Uh, it would be really cool if there were like some some more textures to use uh, for paths. But also for interior paths, like tiling and that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, when they bring out that, that's when I'm going to be really happy. Now, right here, this roof, I really like the way it turned out. There's a lot of detail in there, and well, I say that there's a lot of the same detail actually. It's kind of a, a rep, you know, a lot of repetition. Um, <laughs> here, oh my God, that wall is so ugly. I just try to fill it up. You know, it's. Um, I I think I can cover it up later actually, with either a tree or something like that, some foliage to put there. Uh, which will look better, I promise. Um, but that that wall right there, you know, it's it's kind of slanted, and it's sort of like a roof, but it's not really a roof. And I just decided, you know, when you when you have this plain wall, it just looks very boring. So you can add as much detail to it as you want, and that's kind of the crux when it comes to this game. That is foliage. I'm also really happy about. It makes everything look a lot better. But I see my time is up, so I want to thank you all for watching. And I suppose I'll see you guys in the next episode. So peace from Pieces of Prestige.